What's up, Rage Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Yu, and you're watching the Rage and Ron Review. I got a review for you. Today, I watched San Andreas, and San Andreas is the latest film starring The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. We most recently saw him in Furious 7, but this time around, he's not going up against bad guys. In this movie, he's dealing with something even bigger, and that would be domestic family issues. I'm just kidding. I mean, no, I'm not, because he does have to deal with domestic family issues in this film, but he also has to deal with another thing, and that would be an earthquake. The biggest earthquake ever recorded, all right? I don't know which is worse, but anyways, he has to deal with both of them, but that's typically what makes a disaster film. A lot of disasters and some family issues to provide that human emotion that helps us connect with the characters. But anyways, that's what happens in the film. When we think of disaster porn, that's what I'm calling these types of films, disaster porn flicks, we usually think of uh, Roland Emmerich. Right, Roland Emmerich films, uh, that would be 2012, which is like the king of disaster porn films. Uh, also, The Day After Tomorrow, as well as Independence Day. Yes, I said Independence Day. It is an alien invasion flick, but it is still a disaster. Okay, <laughs> a pretty big disaster on a global scale. Uh, this time, San Andreas is a disaster porn flick that is directed by Brad Payton. I don't believe I've seen any of his work. But I gotta say that um, Brad Payton really one-upped Roland Emmerich. Now, Roland Emmerich's 2012 is a film that is, um, it's got disasters happening all over the world. After all, it is about, you know, the, the end of the Mayan calendar. Um, well, as for San Andreas, it's more localized. It's more, um, you know, it's more just uh, focused on the western region of the United States, uh, specifically California. But don't let that fool you because this is a huge disaster flick. There's a lot going on. I mean, sure, there's, you know, uh, out running, out driving, out boating, <laughs> out flying disasters. And yes, just like 2012, we get a lot of that in San Andreas. So they've pretty much followed the same formula as any other disaster film out there. Uh, you got the human emotion, you have the uh, you have the the main character trying to connect with his with other members of his family and uh, essentially it's really about um, a man and his daughter or a man and his son and a, or a man and his wife or a man and his family or a man and his dog. That's the formula of your typical disaster flick. All right. And that's what we get with San Andreas. OK. And of course, you have to have the scientist in there. In any disaster flick, you got to have a scientist, a smart guy who um, who who knows something. All right, he detects the disaster coming. He notices an an, an anomaly, and then um, and then you have uh, two separate stories going on. You have the guy that's dealing with the earthquake. You have the scientist who's who, who's uh, predicting everything that's about to happen. And essentially, we're always too late. And yes, this movie is full of cliches. Okay, this movie is full of the classic cliches. That we've seen in a lot of disaster films, we get the predictable character that we know is going to die. We get the we have the uh, the predictable and very very cliched uh, um, estranged relationship between the two characters, but the earthquake brings them all together. Okay, <laughs> and we have the character which um, you know tries to take over the family but then later on in a disaster type situation you you finally realize that this guy really doesn't care about the family after all he just cares about himself we get a lot of these typical and very cliched characters we also get a lot of one-liners for example lines that consist of uh don't quit on me now or i'm i'm coming to save you don't give up <laughs> Hold on! <laughs> we get a lot of that, all right? It feels like The Rock, or rather Dwayne Johnson, uh, has a pretty easy script. But you know what? That is something that he's very, very good at, okay? Make no mistake about it. This is a film that is kind of tailored for The Rock because he plays this role so well. As a matter of fact, in a lot of the more emotional scenes, I think he does a good job with that too. Now, this is, this is what it all comes down to. Okay, and that is how is the action? How are the disasters? 
Well, I gotta say that what I love about Brad Payton as a director is his attention to detail. There is a lot going on here, especially during a disaster. And by disaster, I mean things like tsunamis, uh, 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 fiery uh, buildings, uh, things falling down, earthquakes that or or things collapsing that we have to run away from there is a lot going on in fact there's this one shot where it's just a long take it's just a very very long take but then it follows one of the characters but then it moves the camera this way something happens it moves the camera this way something happens and goes back to the character and uh, the, the character we're following and then we continue that for a, quite a journey and that felt like a ride to me it almost felt like the earthquake ride at Universal Studios so I really really enjoyed that sequence in fact that I think that would be one of the the bigger and more um, I guess uh, highlighted sequences of that film all right um, and of course you got to deal with a lot of cliche moments like you know um, dealing with disasters in water and by disasters in water I'm talking about more Titanic-esque type disasters you know what I'm saying um, there's a lot of that going on it's a lot of stuff that we've already seen before but I just feel like this is a more um, it almost brings it down to a street level all right, because it's not global. I mean, sure, it can spread spread on a more global scale eventually, but they keep it pretty localized, and I kind of like that about it because we're we're seeing a lot of these landmarks that we recognize very very well uh, get taken out, and then it just keeps on like it's just relentless. I find that with films like 2012, they give us like just a short sequence, and then is a lot of drama, and then another big but short sequence. And then a lot of drama. And then another big but short sequence. And then a lot of drama. It's that type of formula. I find that Brad Payton in this time around for Disaster Porn Flake, he, he draws it out. Which I really, really love because that's what we're paying to see. We're paying to see big disasters. And he's drawing out the disasters. He's making it very, very... um. Uh, he's making it very, uh, uh, um, I guess, more exciting for the for the audience. And he he makes it where it's, it's not just fun... But it's it's serious, okay? It's not like John Cusack in 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 um in 2012 here, where he's actually uh, trying to outrun a collapsing road, and it just looks silly as explosions are going off behind him. It's not that type of 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 uh of action. It's more serious. It's more like like uh you know edge of your seat style um action. It's not fun and funny. It's not that type of style where it's completely over the top. It is over the top. But still, they managed to keep it more on a serious level, all right? But there are a lot of cliche things and a lot of very predictable things on uh, in the movie. Uh, but at the end of the day, I find that a lot of the... Um, uh, the you know, a lot of the, the disaster sequences that take place are very, very spectacular and very, very well done. There is a lot going on. And the disasters are really 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 give you that oomph you know we really really feel it so i gotta say that i really enjoyed this flick i think it's one of the better disaster films out there i think it's a better film than uh day after tomorrow and 2012 uh and independence day i well i don't know okay <laughs> anyways it, it is a really it's a really really fun film it's very very entertaining and i just gotta say one thing okay i think that brad payton knew that in any disaster flick um you just gotta have aircraft in it. You gotta have your your main character being able to fly an aircraft. You just have to. The reason why is because if you have a, a, a disaster film where you know the main characters all they're doing is just walking, then you get the day after tomorrow, which was essentially quite a uh, a slow moving disaster film. There wasn't a whole lot going on there. But you know you have sequences like like the 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 seven forty seven trying to outfly a fiery wall in Independence Day, and then you have a a, a, um, a private plane in twenty twelve trying to outfly volca volcanic rocks. You know um, you know that is exciting. All right, so that's why <laughs> that's why you got to have aircraft in this film. Brad Payton understood that formula. He pulled it off. Um, and then we have sequences where where the uh, Dwayne Johnson tries to outfly collapsing buildings, and it's really really fun. All right. Anyways, that's all I gotta say in this video. I really enjoyed this movie, and I'm gonna give this movie a seven out of ten. 
Okay, very, very entertaining. The 3D is optional. Uh, I think it's good in some sequences, and then it's uh, and then it's like not really there in some other sequences. It's very inconsistent, so it's really up to you if you want to go with the 3D. Uh, but um, yeah, there you have it. 7 out of 10, and that's all I gotta say about this film. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation, also follow me on Twitter, at Rage Nation. My name's Alex Chief. thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Of a hero once he joins the X-Men, which he doesn't do in the Gambit film. I mean, other X-Men mutants appear 